His statue on the corner of East Adams and Woodward is passed by every day. Without being glanced at or even acknowledged on who the man is or what the statue even represents, if these people knew who Hayes and Pingree was and what he did for the city of Detroit, his impact on the development of the city would be regarded as one of the most successful mayorships the city has ever seen, as well as an impact on the society as a whole. Hayes and Pingree was a mayor toward the end of the 19th century in Detroit. Um, known for his progressivism, he was uh, a guy who didn't back down from the establishment, um, wasn't a career politician, um, although he ended up being mayor of Detroit for over 10 years and then he became governor of Michigan. So He ran a real grassroots campaign. He was very sure at that time Detroit, um, Detroit politics was, as it always has been, real complicated. Um, and yet in a way it was simple. Back then there were wards. There were 16 individual wards. Each ward elected two aldermen. So there were 32 guys in city council, which was called a common council at that point, it were, were busy fighting amongst themselves. There was a German contingent, there was an Irish contingent, there was kind of the old money contingent, and each of these was kind of a machine. Um, there was a lot of corruption going on at the time, and Pingree knew he wasn't going to get that part of the vote. He wasn't going to get these Democrats to vote for him, but he also knew that there were a lot of people, especially the new immigrants that had come to town for the manufacturing jobs, that, that didn't have any political alliance yet. In fact, most of them had come from Europe. Uh, a large German population had just come over. We were getting the Polish population was starting to come. And these people had, um, you know, those were the, 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 the heart of where kind of the, the communism and the socialist uh, philosophies had, had already percolated up. Those people were bringing them with them. And Pingree saw that as an advantage. So he would go out to the Polish community with an interpreter and tell them that he was going to be their mayor. He wasn't going to be the mayor for the bosses. He was going to be their mayor. He'd go to the different ethnic communities and really kind of wrap up the, the lower class. And they all voted, so they were good votes. And by doing that, he kind of circumvented the boss politics that was, that was prevalent in Detroit at the time. Pingree's most notable actions while he was in office as mayor um, were probably threefold. One had to do with the, the lowering, the campaign to lower prices um, for commodities that were provided by outside entities. In other words, the people who ran the streetcars, uh, in, in Pingree's mind, were charging way too much. And Pingree fought them to bring the prices down, and when they didn't bring the prices down, he decided it was time to start a municipal streetcar company um, based with electricity, not the old horses, the old nags that were falling over dead in front of the streetcars, but a modern electrical system that he could set up. Um, he didn't completely fulfill that goal, but he sure gave the streetcar companies a run for their money. He also forced the, uh, the gas companies to lower their prices to the city. He made the ferry companies lower their rates to carry people back and forth between Detroit and Windsor. So he really, he, that was kind of his first attack. Um, in places where he wasn't successful, his second really major uh, accomplishment was to start providing uh, municipal services provided by the city of Detroit. In other words, uh, and, and really that's kind of where the city was right up through the 20th century. Detroit had a municipal electric su supply system. The, uh, the, the public lighting department provided the, the electricity for all the street lights. Um, for all the traffic lights, for all of the fire boxes and police boxes that used to be on every corner. Um, it was the largest publicly owned telephone system in the country because Pingree got it started because the Edison Illuminating Company was charging too much money. I think Pingree got known kind of as the people's mayor um, because he really did attend to all the people. The mayors before this had always catered to the, the very high political class um, and the very wealthy manufacturing class and really had just ignored the rest of the populace. Even though they had a vote, um, the, those upper classes controlled the vote. Pingree broke that. Um, he's the one that came in and decided that it should be a much more honest 
um, government. And government should take care of a lot of the things that people needed. Um, they, you know, so he provided people with cheaper streetcars. He provided people with cheaper water. He provided people with jobs, or if they didn't have jobs, the opportunity to make some kind of a living. And I, with Detroit growing so fast, and again, this is a time before the automobile, but it's a time when Detroit's making more railroad cars than any place else in the country. Detroit's making more ships than any place else in the country. And these jobs are all being taken by people coming in the town. Just as Pingree had come in from Maine, there were a lot of people coming in from the farms at this point, a lot of people starting to come up from the south for the available jobs, and lots of immigrants coming in from Europe at the time to take these jobs. And these, while they were good jobs, they were, we hadn't reached a middle class yet. It was kind of a lower middle class, and Pingree appealed to these people. And really, because of his care for them, he became a hero to them. And that, I think, cemented his, uh, his place in Detroit history. In order to maintain his mayorship for as long as he did, he had to run several times in Detroit. And I think his sense of humor came out when he was campaigning. Um, he had no problem making fun of the other side and pointing out their weaknesses and how they didn't work for the people. But he also, because of his unusual looks, which I've mentioned before, um, you know, his, his face, his big round head, his goatee, he was a very distinguished and distinguishable person. You'd look at a photograph with ten people in it and you could point to Pingree in a second. So they used that in his campaigns to promote him. They made small clay pipes that had his image right on the front. The Pingree pipes were there. Um, he also distributed, um, because he was known as Potato Patch Pingree, they made a, a, a little bank, a metal bank that were popular back at that time, out of, uh, it looked like a potato, you know, and it said Pingree potatoes on them, and, you know, there was a slot to put money in. And he kind of played up on the, what his critics thought were his weaknesses, he used as a strength in, in running, to remind people who he was, to remind people what he did for them. You know, that was kind of the, that was the way he attacked his campaigns. When Pingree died suddenly, he was in Europe, and they brought his body back to Detroit uh, to be buried. Um, his funeral was huge. Even the people who didn't like him understood the power that he held in Detroit and appreciated him for, um, for his, his honesty, his perseverance. They didn't always like what he did, but they appreciated that he did it with a, a good heart, and he did it for the people of Detroit. And um, after his funeral, there was a collection taken and they established a beautiful monument to him in, in uh, Grand Circus Park, which is still there today. It's a, it's a beautiful monument. It's one of the things that visitors from out of town say, that's a big statue. Who is that guy? And the story of Hayes and Pingree comes up again and again. He was voted, they, they did a study about 10 years ago, there was a book that came out uh, by Melvin Holly, I believe, called you know, America's Ten Greatest Mayors. And Pingree was in the upper half of that list, um, a very selective list of mayors who had the biggest influences on their city and arguably on the country. The impact he had on Detroit's history, along with his legacy as being regarded as one of the country's best mayors, very few people know who Hayes and Pingree even was. He is one of the many examples in Detroit's history that people just don't know about. The Detroit Historical Society replaces and renews that inspiration and passion like that of which Hayes and Pingree once Accessing and stepping into the Detroit Historical Society, are you engulfed by the true power of this city's marvelous pastime? And in that, cultivate that passion and inspiration for the city like it used to be, just like Hayes and Pingree. Only can the Detroit Historical Society get you there. By stopping at the museum and visiting, do you really learn and become empowered by some of the most significant history in this country? It is said that to have a bright future, you must learn and look to the past. The Detroit Historical Society is that key to the city's bright future. By stopping in today, will you only see and become 